In today's episode. Wait. Now I'm not supposed to think what the customer wants? My cousin stole loads of jewelry, so I stole his inheritance. Got $40,000 for accidentally confiding a secret to a gossiping co-worker. So let's get started. Wait. Now I'm not supposed to think what the customer wants? So two malicious compliances in two weeks, new record for me. This can serve as a sequel to my previous malicious compliance, as the cast and the premise is the same, just reverse. As a quick catch up, I work at a printing hub as a print and copy expert, working with the machines to get them to print, setting up files, and quality checking things before they come out. It is a pretty laid back job, and I really enjoy the technical side of it, not so much my co-workers however. Don't get me wrong however, I have no doubt they are good people, but I feel that they have settled into the job a little too much, and every little change gets them riled up. And then there is my manager Kay who is a good person at heart, but recently stress has been causing her to take it out on the employees. I stick with it because up until now she has been good, she at least deserves for me to stick through a stressful moment, especially coming into holiday season. Anyways, the incident. Three days ago I was working with the big color machine printer. A rather large job came in for 200 books. This particular job was a rush order and needed to get out the same day, and the value of the job exceeded over $2,000. It was also a very important client I have worked with in the past, so I wanted to be extra sure everything was okay. When I printed my proof and leafed through the booklet however, I noticed rectangular boxes where text should have been. This is normally caused by our computers or printers missing the font that the customer had used, and I suspect they used a different font than they normally use for the Halloween season. Please, people. Provide your print studios with PDFs, not Word documents, so I called up the customer to figure out the font they needed. No answer. Well frig. The thing was this order needed to start printing immediately in order to reach the deadline, Unless I dedicate using both color printers we have to print the order, which is actually not recommended as the color calibrations are different on both printers, for some reason. I emailed the customer and put the order on hold, I knew the customer would want those fonts. Later on, my manager who we will call K asked me about why the order was still on hold, and I explained that the file was not correct. I even brought up the file and showed her. She agreed that the file was incorrect however she insisted on printing the order anyway. K, the order is a rush job, and they absolutely need that order immediately. Me, I understand that, but the file is wrong. If we produce the file and the customer rejects it, then we are out the money to produce the job. K, SLA is more important than a quality job. We won't get money if we fail to deliver on time. Me silently reminding myself that SLA includes quality, K, I have dealt with this client before, I know they will reject this. I am fairly certain they would prefer waiting a day to get their stuff rather than receiving something they can't use. K, Cole, just print the order anyways. Me dying inside, yes K. So, this is funny, because last week K got after me about the exact opposite situation. There was an order we couldn't do correctly because our machines were dumping toner on the files. I assured Kay that I was certain the customer wouldn't mind the toner dump, but she said I wasn't thinking of the customer. I was thinking of the customer, as I was the customer. See my previous post for more information on that. Now, I am thinking about the customer and being told to ignore that. Okay, sure. So I printed the order, all $2,000 worth of it. It was a massive ordeal which I knew was all going into the trash, but I did what Kay asked. Before I left for the day, I checked our business email and saw the client didn't email us back. Also tried calling again, and no response. I took one of the books with me and left for the day. Rather than go straight home I stopped at the business I knew would be selling or giving out what we were producing, since it was on the way, and showed the cashier. The cashier was absolutely horrified and immediately contacted the manager, who was out for the day. The employee thanked me for going out of my way to inform them, and gave me some store credit which I used on some paintbrushes for minis, don't ask to see them, I just started. 
Oh yeah, did I mention this place was one of the local gaming stores I started going to? I knew those booklets weren't supposed to look like that. The fallout didn't happen until today, the order was completely thrown out, and we were forced to redo the entire thing at no charge. $2,000 down the drain. K, for the first time I can recall, tried to throw me under the bus when head office asked us what happened, but my co-workers supported me, and I pointed out on the job ticket that I had actually failed the quality check. I had no idea how that order went to shipping. I don't know what has gotten into Kay lately, but she has been extremely off. Before people start offering advice on how to proceed and such, I have already started recording situations like this and other odd occurrences happening around the facility and advising my coworkers to do the same. Also updating my resume, just in case. I really would not rather leave this job, but better safe than sorry. Update 1. The fact that some of you are immediately saying she may have a substance abuse problem is quite surprising, but I am going to take Kay aside with my supervisor in tow and ask her point blank what is going on. We'll update later today. Thanks to everyone who has actually been answering the print industry questions on my behalf, I had a game to run yesterday and couldn't keep an eye on this post. Mini update, push to the ground, Reddit piling it upon me chanting miniature, miniature. Eventually, a URL link falls out of OP's hand and falls to the ground, a picture of a poorly painted miniature with ugly colors showing on it. Update 2, Confrontation. So today I arranged a small meeting with Kay and my supervisor, and it went unexpectedly. Enter new challenger, Kermit as supervisor. Also, can't believe I have to elaborate, not real names. Kay refused to elaborate on what's going on, saying it's no one else's business and to just leave it alone. Kermit also expressed his concern that it was affecting staff morale. She gave a vague explanation about at home stuff that is happening, daughter is working on a project, the husband is doing overtime, and mother is pressuring her to get the decorations for Halloween. I am honestly not buying it, but if she doesn't want to be straight with us and ruin the seven years we work together, then fine by me. I tried to approach her in a civil matter, and she snapped at me. For now, I am just going to document everything, keep a paper trail, email trail, cover my butt, and everything you guys are suggesting and more. I sincerely hope Kay will get over whatever is ailing her, but at this point it's obvious she doesn't want any help. Unimportant update, since people are asking, some people asked how the one shot went. It went spectacularly well. I was putting it on for a convention. For my convention games I aim more towards fun than challenge, give them a memorable experience. As such, when they only had three minutes to escape the ship they were trapped on and finish the session before the time block expired and encountered the final boss, they hit the boss with an attack that could deal one of four different damage types, chromatic orb, with a critical hit, they coincidentally choose the element the boss was vulnerable to, killing it in one shot. Cheers and sighs of relief all around the table. It was amazing. After that, I ran a seminar on how to DM, basically going over the traps early DMs fall into, like getting into a player versus DM mentality and properly incentivizing player interaction with your world by rewarding players properly. My cousin stole loads of jewelry, so I stole his inheritance. I do not speak lawyer so please forgive me. Backstory 25 years ago my aunt passed away when I was a baby, leaving my two cousins who were both in their early 20s alone to fend for themselves. My grandparents, who were very wealthy, put a clause in their will that grandkids will receive half of their share of inheritance if a parent passes before the children reach age 30, and then the other half when my grandparents eventually passed. Both my cousins received a very sizable inheritance coupled with the money they got from selling my aunt's house. The younger of the two paid off her college loans and was able to buy property, she still lives on the same plot of land. The older sibling blew all of his money. Straight out of a book of the Bible, within six years, he was back to living in a condo working as a police officer. Everyone in our small family knew he had a substance issue, so he was barely making ends meet with his officer's salary and buying copious amounts of drugs. The next four years my cousin went to rehab three times, sponsored by my grandparents. 
He sobered up after getting his girlfriend, now wife pregnant. Absolutely wretched woman. She saw my grandparents as payday and essentially baby trapped my cousin thinking it was her ticket. Within seven years they had three kids, so she is locked in tight. She's a nurse and with three kids around they always needed a little boost. Guess who they would always ask? You got it, my grandparents. Being the kind spirits they are, they always lended a hand. My father, mother, sister, and I got sick of it very quickly. My grandmother unfortunately passed away when I was 17 leaving my grandpa as the last remaining. I was undoubtedly my grandfather's favorite among the grandkids which left a real sore spot in the mouth of my cousin and his wife. I had two more years at home before college, so I lived with my grandpa to keep him company and help take care of him. My cousin and his wife hated this so much so that whenever they came to visit and I was not home, they would send their three gremlins into my room to destroy it, my room had double doors so it couldn't be locked. This was the start. The longer I lived there, the more they would mess with me. My cousin even went as far to place one of those little mechanical noise makers in the cabinet in my room, the ones that play sounds at random intervals that make you think you're insane. Thankfully my German Shepherd would always hear it and after a week or so she finally found it. They did this to distance me and deter me from taking care of grandpa, so they could swoop in and be the heroes. This continued until one of the kids found my gun. By this time I was 18 and in the possession of a firearm. I use quotations because my grandfather has guns, but cannot aim and shoot them anymore due to arthritis and nerve degeneration, so when I moved in, he placed all the weapons in my hands should the need of self-defense arise. But should he see them out for any reason other than cleaning, there would be hell to raise. Being very well trained with guns and having a sense of pride in defending my home I took this responsibility very seriously. I always kept a handgun in a locked container in my nightstand with the key on a high shelf out of reach from the gremlins. One fateful day, I am out getting my grandfather food when I come home and my older cousin, his wife and my grandfather are staring at a gun on the table. It was my gun that I kept in the lockbox. It was loaded and had a bullet chambered. I always keep a magazine in the lockbox but never loaded into the gun. The lockbox was nowhere to be seen. My cousin claimed one of the children found the gun and was playing with it. I was 100% certain that he either found the key or broke the lockbox open to get to it and load it, as a 6-year-old would not be able to reach a key I could barely grab, figure out what it was to, load my gun and chamber it. I tried my best to explain what my cousin had said was bullsh asterisk t, and that I never keep my firearms loaded in the house but my cousin who was a cop scolded me on gun safety and threatened to have me arrested if I didn't leave and hadn't arrested me yet because we're family. I was asked to collect my belongings and go back to my parents. My cousin had one, or so he thought. The next day I apologized to grandpa and explained to him there was no way one of the kids could have gotten the key, he agreed with me, and he apologized, but he thought it best I move out until things cool down, but once they do I would be welcome back home. Our relationship was a little fractured due to disinformation provided by my cousin. A month later, my grandfather died of a heart attack at 86. I was devastated. I was just beginning to get back into rhythm with him and rebuilding the trust that was somewhat shattered. To this day, I am still unsure of what kind of man he saw me as due to my cousin. Immediately, my cousin and his wife began as asterisk king up to my dad, as they had sealed payday with grandpa, it was time to move on to the uncle. This persisted for a month or two. I wouldn't stand for it. Then came time for the will. My grandfather's lawyer read out the will to me, my father, mother and sister in our home, our two cousins would be briefed individually on their share of the estate, per my grandparents' requests. Then the miracle line in the will comes to fruition, if anyone attempts to claim any part of the estate that is not assigned to them, they forfeit any assets they are supposed to receive, and will be divided equally among the remaining family members. This was basically their way of saying if you try to claim more than you're given, you get nothing. My father is supposed to receive every piece of physical property, aside from two or three items he set aside for me, from my grandparents as he is the only remaining child. The Revenge I hatched my plan. 
I called my cousin and told him all of grandma's jewelry was to be donated to a charity auction. Grandma's collection of gems and medals was extensive to say the least so a charity event wouldn't care if a few pieces didn't make it right? It was a lure of gargantuan proportions that my greedy b asterisk start of a cousin could not resist. He bit right on it and headed over to my grandparents' house ASAP, determined to snatch up as much as he could, a handful would send his kids to college. Regardless of what I said, the jewelry was never going to go to him anyways, so his actions were purely his own since none of it was destined to be his. Coincidentally, dad was on his way with the lawyer to my grandparents' house to overlook everything, formality stuff. According to my dad's testimony, my cousin had three shoe boxes worth of grandma and grandpa's jewelry piled on the kitchen counter ready for loading into his car. My dad and the lawyer stood in the kitchen wondering why it was all there when my cousin walks in from my grandparents' bedroom with a fourth and final shoebox. The jig was up and he put two and two together that I set him up. Which was true. But there was no penalty against me for exploiting my cousin's greed, so he would f asterisk ck himself over. It's worth noting that between the 18 years from my aunt's death and my grandpa's death, their wealth had increased several times over so my cousin felt cheated and expected to receive just as much as my sister and I despite receiving half of his already and blowing it. Throughout this whole ordeal, his younger sister, my other cousin, has not had a problem at all and is still weeping over grandpa's death like the rest of us. However just like that, my cousin lost enough money in the course of 30 minutes that made him contemplate his sanity. Over greed. My cousin's b asterisk tch of a wife apparently filed for divorce a few weeks later. We haven't heard from him in nearly six years as he is all but disgraced now. You can call this a fairy tale ending, and on this particular part of the story it somewhat is, there was a massive lawsuit by an unknown family member involving the IRS and FBI later on, but honestly, I would rather have my grandparents. Leave comments if you want the other part of the story, but it's not really a revenge story. Got $40,000 for accidentally confiding a secret to a gossiping co-worker. I worked at a chain salon in the US for minimum wage, plus tips. We got paid on a sliding scale, the more you added services the more your hourly pay. Then, for back to school, we started offering $10 haircuts. It's dumb to offer a big discount on back to school because that's when everyone needs a haircut but whatever. Except, to advertise this sale we had to stand on a rickety step stool and hang a 10-foot long 3-foot wide banner off the roof of our store. The step stool alone made it a dangerous task, but on top of it the sidewalk was uneven. Our manager insisted we do twice a day, open and close, in case someone steals the banner. Because certainly, someone would want to steal a banner with our logo that says $10 haircuts. It was annoying, but I was looking forward to my next paycheck. I had a high service dollar per hour which should have meant a bigger hourly pay and paycheck. Except it didn't. That $7 per haircut discount? It was coming out of our final service dollar calculations, and we ended up making significantly less than usual. I'd worked there for years and this was the smallest back-to-school paycheck I'd ever seen. I went in the next day and was pissed. That morning, a co-worker, who was a total brown nose and gossip, and I were outside setting up the banner. It was my turn to stand on the rickety step stool, and I said I was glad this will be the last time I ever do this. I was fully prepared to make a joke about how I was going to fall and crack my head open, when the petty revenge idea came into my mind, and I swiftly executed it. When she asked why, I told her not to tell anyone, but I'd accepted a job at another salon with a set schedule, higher commission and $5 more an hour. I said I'd planned on putting in my two weeks, but they needed me to start sooner, so I was going to work the weekend and not come back. This would leave us understaffed for the back-to-school rush. After reiterating she could not tell anyone, especially not our boss, she agreed. I left early that day and on my next shift my boss pulled me into her office. She said she'd heard a rumor that I was leaving to work at a different salon. I told her I had a much better offer elsewhere but if she could match that I would love to stay. She had to put a call into our district leader about the raise, but said I could work with a set schedule starting the following week. 
I was working until 9 p.m. some days and at 9 a.m. the next, the unpredictable schedule made finding childcare a pain in the ass. I was consistently ranked number two in sales for our store and the district, so the DL approved the raise and I stayed there another five years. Which means I got an additional $39,000 in pay for accidentally telling the salon gossip my secret. I also got 20% commission on $500 to $1,000 a week in product sales. The pro revenge, I also started printing out my service sales slip from the day before at the beginning of every shift, so that when payroll readjusted the paychecks to include coupons I could pull up my record and dispute it. According to payroll there was nothing they could do about it. I stayed another five years, raising the issue sporadically, until they brought back the $10 per haircut sale and I quit. A few months after I left I was made aware that a different employee in another state filed a class action lawsuit, and I got a letter asking if I wanted to be a part of it. I accepted and the lawyer loved receiving five years worth of documentation, emails from corporate and payroll, etc. They had to go back through all of my paychecks and compensate me for the difference. This included adding the free haircuts, reward program, and discounted haircuts as their whole amount, increasing the service dollar. 19 cents an hour here and 30 cents an hour there added up and despite the fact that the settlement was split with a lot of people I got $10,000 from that in addition to my adjusted pay which was around half the settlement amount. Thanks for watching.